Church. I am the senior pastor, Reverend Jean Williams. Um, our associate, Brent, Pastor Brenda, is on vacation today. We do allow that from time to time, um, so we wish her well on her vacation. We also wish to welcome all those who are joining us by television audience and live stream this morning. We are glad that you are worshiping with us here in our beautiful sanctuary this morning. As we prepare for worship this morning, I invite you to find that registration pad in your, in your pew. It's on one side or the other. Please be sure to sign in on it and then pass it on down. And as other friends come in, please make sure that they see that as well. If you are a first time guest with us, there is a special little card in that registration pad that we would ask that you fill out. Let us know more about you so that we can tell you more about us. Um, and Especially, we have a few announcements uh, for this week that are things that are coming up. The first is that we will not have midweek manna this week because we are having our UMW United Methodist Women annual bazaar on Saturday from 8.30 to 2. Um, the, the bazaar setup takes the whole church and the whole week. And it is an amazing feat. I've heard. I can't wait to see all of this. Um, I've been on Thursday mornings poking my head downstairs and always in awe of everything they have. And then this week I've been seeing all these pictures on Facebook and I'm going, I've not seen that yet. Where have you been hiding that? So I'm really excited. I hope you're excited. Please bring your friends um, and your neighbors. And if you need a little enticement to bring them, buy them a cinnamon roll and a cup of coffee for $1.50. You can get those tickets from Jan out in the narthex. And then they have all of the information for the bazaar plus a breakfast. And you know our cinnamon rolls can't be beat. So um, bring them, give those out to your friends, uh, invite them to come and join us on Saturday. I believe that is all we are going to announce this morning. As always, we have a million things in the uh, bulletin and on our website. You will be receiving the October newsletter this week. Um, so be sure to check out some things there as well. This morning, we celebrate a special holy day within the life of the church. It's called World Communion Sunday. This is the first Sunday of October, and churches, uh, Protestant churches all around the world, celebrate this day in Holy Communion, with Holy Communion, and we remember that Christianity is worldwide, and we join our hearts with those all around the world today in a special way at the table of Christ. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, this time that we are able to gather together to worship you. We give thanks for our brothers and sisters around the world also gathering in your name some as freely as we are this morning, and some under disguise, in secret, because their faith is so important that they have to meet, and they have to pray together, and they have to break bread together, yet it is illegal to do so. So Lord, we especially pray for those who are breaking bread and drinking the cup this morning, who are doing so in fear but doing so out of a deep, deep commitment to you. God, as we begin our worship together this morning, I pray that your Holy Spirit be with us. Fill this room, fill our bodies. Let us feel you as we are in your presence today. It is in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Brock just reminded me, we do have a hymn change this morning. We are not singing the same hymn we sang last Sunday. It is number 103, Immortal, Invisible God, and it will be on the screen.
invite you to remain standing for our call to worship. Come, let us bow before the Holy One. Come, let us feel God's mercy. As God's people, we lift our voices in praise. God is good. And all the time. Indeed, God is good. And God is so good all the time that we need to tell each other that. Right? So turn to someone and tell them that God is good and it is good to see you this morning. Good morning. morning. Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 100. Listen to the word of God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As our ushers prepare for our morning offering, I wish to say that God's love does endure through generations, and his love is steadfast through all generations. But that only happens if we prepare for the generations, and some of that means giving back our gifts to our God who is enduring and everlasting.
of abundance. You fill us with good things. You satisfy our thirst. You meet our every need. From your rock, our blessings flow. Accept what we give in return, our hearts, our hands, our gifts, our love. Use them to answer the cries of a world in need. Amen.
<laughs> this morning, we have, as we know, <laughs> right now, we have no one of our members in the hospital. We have several who have moved different places, and you may see that in our prayer list that you can receive at the end of the worship service in the full list. Um, as always, in your bulletin is a list of um, immediate concerns. And we give thanks for these and this good news. Let us pray. Open our hearts this morning, O Lord. Help us to listen closely to the words of encouragement that you offer to us. Let us internalize those words so that they become the very fiber of our being and frame our thoughts and actions. Make us mindful of all those this day who live in places of fear and greed, of oppression and hate, of poverty and hopelessness. Enable us to be those who will work for peace and hope for all your people. We lift so many people in our prayers this morning. Many of our loved ones face situations of ill health and mourning, of loneliness and fear, and of alienation and sorrow. Bring them comfort and peace. Our hearts cry out for people all around the world who are endangered by systems of hatred and fear. Touch the hearts of these dear ones, O Lord. Make us those who bring messages and actions of hope and faith. Give us courage and nourish our spirits with this worldwide communion of bread and cup. Strengthen us to truly be your witnesses this day in all our days. And now let us join our hearts together as we pray the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children will come forward for a few moments together. Yes, that means you. Come on. <laughs> I have to explain something and I need your help. Okay. You don't have to run. It's okay. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Good. Are you sure? Okay. I have something here. What is it? It's an envelope. Whose name's on it? Mine. You know what? Your family is going to get an envelope just like this, and it's going to have your family's name on it. So it'll say Mendoza. And they're going to get it after this worship service in the Northex, just like all of you. And inside is what? Papers. A lot of papers. This, though, is a catalog. Everyone in ministry. That means you. Did you know that? Did you know that you are a minister? No. You are. So are all these people, too. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. And look, there's a whole section right here that's just for you kids the children. This section right here, it says children's promise. So when your family gets this later, I want you to look at it and open it up and see that you have this whole section right here. It's a lot of words, but I know you can read it with some help, right? Okay. So did you know that you can sign up to an acolyte even in this service? 
You can. Wouldn't that be cool? Do you know that you can even sign up to be an usher in this service? You can. Yeah. Did you know that you can do help in worship and that that's a ministry? Did you know that you can also sign up to pray? We should just pray anyway. Why do we have to sign up to pray? That's kind of silly. But we do anyway because you know why? That's committing ourselves to praying to God. So then we're, we have to because we've signed up to do it. So now we have to pray. That's why you're here every Sunday? Awesome. Almost. Awesome. Do you know that you can also help clean up Sunday school rooms after Sunday school? I bet you do that anyway, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know that you can sign up to bring a friend to church or visit a nursing home or to bring food for the pack a -sack? Well, guess what? Now you do. And i got to find the right one. Look at this. Whose name is that? Oh, actually, it's Natalie. Okay. Because at the top of this, it says 2018 Children's Promise Card. You get your very own card. And so will Zach, and so will Riker. It doesn't look like a card. Well, it's kind of a piece of paper. <coughs> it's a form. Excuse me. And so this top part, Look, you can sign up for your prayers, your presence, your service, and your witness. Okay? And then all those numbers that go with all the numbers that are in here, in that box that we just talked about, there's something really cool on the bottom I want you to see. You, you, get to sign up for how much you're going to give to the church. Ooh! And you know what's really cool? We're going to track it so that every few months you're going to get a letter that shows you how much you have given to the church. You. Just you. You have over $100 in your room? You know, it would be awesome if you just gave $10 of that to the church. That's called a tithe. Dad can help you, help you understand that a little bit better, okay? But then, so there's a place here that you can say, I will give so much money to the church, and I will give so much money to missions and special projects. Okay? So I want you to talk it over with mom and dad. Pray about it. And then you get to fill this out and bring it back in a few weeks. Okay? Cool? Because you are a minister. And you are important to the body of Christ. Okay? Can we pray together? Okay, you want to repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting me be a minister to you, of you. I said the wrong words. Yeah. Help us to be better servants of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Izzy. I needed that. <laughs> so it is true. You can go pick up your folder with all of the paper <laughs> that has your names on it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, throughout the sermon. This Sunday is the beginning of that four-letter word, stewardship. And I say that it's a four-letter word because, you know, often we classify things that we don't like to talk about or a situation we don't want to talk about with a four-letter word, usually words that we don't say in church, right? <laughs> Am I right? Yes. So I want to discuss a few different things this morning. First of all, um, this is our stewardship series, but I want you to forget that word stewardship, okay? I want you to think more about being a disciple and discipleship. So a different ship, right? So we're going to get off the one and we're going to get on the other. 
We'll put a plank between the two so all of us can walk across to the discipleship boat. But I want you to also frame this as a time of talking about generosity of your heart. Generosity through our membership vows, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Now, I have, I have to take a little bit of a poll here. I've asked this question in the coffee chats, but not everyone was there. Who here was a United Methodist before they ever came to this church? Right, okay. Who here became a United Methodist when they came to this church? Okay, now I'm not going to ask, but there are some of us, I know, I'm not going to embarrass you, <laughs> who attend regularly, who aren't members, but you understand our vows that we take. And if you didn't understand and find them important and part of who we are as a church, you probably would have left by now, okay? So I'm just going to assume that you value them as well. But they're not just the vows we take. It's also a way to frame our discipleship. And so this morning we're going to discuss two of those because we only have four weeks and there's five vows. So we're going to discuss prayers and presence today. One of the things um, we need to discuss, though, is that generosity of the heart and stewardship, even though I said we were leaving that behind, reminds us that God has entrusted us with these gifts, with the gifts of earth, the gifts of our skills and our abilities and talents, and God has also called us to be generous in our giving. These five vows, these are the things that we pledge, and we all re-pledge, by the way, every time someone joins the church. But these are also good ways to remind ourselves of the primary ways we can share our love of Christ and be the love of Christ. Now, our first two vows, as I mentioned, were prayers and presents. We've already heard the psalm reading this morning, and so I invite us now to read our gospel. Not going to be found in my hymnal. It would be in my Bible, which was over there. Matthew chapter 6. Verses 5. through something. We'll get there. Five through 15, I believe, isn't it? Yes. I had in my head 12, and when I looked down in my Bible, I said, no, that can't be right. Okay. Our gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Let us give thanks for the gift of God's word. Amen. This morning, I want to discuss a, 
how we are present before God in individual and corporate prayer. First, why do we pray? If we believe that God is all-knowing, then what's the point of us talking to him since he already knows our needs? Prayer is not something we do for God's sake. It's something we do primarily for our own sake and for the sake of our relationship with God. There's another ship, by the way. Prayer is also an expression of faith. When we pray, we declare that we are not self-sufficient. Did you know that? That you are not self-sufficient? I'm not sure. <laughs> Did you know that? Okay, okay, good. Just making sure you're with me. When we pray, we declare that we are not self-sufficient. We confess that we depend on God. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, Give us this day our daily bread. When we pray that phrase, we confess to God that we depend on God, not just for bread, but for everything we require as creatures. We are dependent. We live by grace and we declare it with our prayers. We also pray because prayer is an act of intimacy. How can we say that we have a relationship with God if we don't talk to God? about our thoughts and fears and hopes. In that communication with God, more is exchanged than just information or petitions. Hopes, fears, and dreams are exchanged, and relationship is built. We pray to God in order to draw closer to God. Third, we pray to invite God to participate in our lives. It's true that God already knows our needs. It's also true that God desires to meet our needs. But sometimes God does not act unless we invite God to do so. Sometimes the healing or the help that we desire will only happen when we sincerely ask God to come into our lives. So how do we pray? Jesus begins his discussion of prayer in Matthew 6 by talking about how not to pray. The Gentiles at the time were worshiping idols, and they believed that the more they spoke and lifted up the idol and the God that they were praying to, then the more that God would bless them. So Jesus says, don't pray like the Gentiles, like the idol worshipers. We pray for the sake of a relationship for God, not for the sake of being admired by other people. However, Jesus is not prohibiting public prayer. In fact, all of us should be capable of praying in public. Yet many Christians find it difficult to pray in public. But all prayers should be done for the right reasons, to seek the will of God, to request God's help, and to grow in our relationship with God. And if that's the case, then prayer requires more than just us talking, right? Prayer is meant to be a two-way communication. So no discussion of how to pray would com be complete without remembering that listening is part of prayer as well. God may not speak to us audibly, though God certainly can, but we can experience God in other ways, in God's direction in other ways. We must remember that the point of prayer is not to give God information or to ask, but to build relationship. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he taught them that what we call the Lord's Prayer. And our gospel reading today, we normally hear on Ash Wednesday, when we're beginning a time of listening, a season of penitence and listening. I believe the Lord's Prayer is meant to be a lesson in the kinds of things that we should include in our prayers. Prayer contains praise to God for who God is. It should contain thanksgiving to God for the things God has done. It should include confession of sins, 
so that our relationship with God is not hindered by them. And it should include supplications, our requests of God. One last thing about the quote-unquote how of prayer. How does prayer work? Someone once told me something I thought was very instructive. They said God answers prayer in one of three ways. Sometimes God intervenes when we pray. Sometimes God changes circumstances. Sometimes God interacts with us when we pray. God may not change the circumstances around us, but God can change the circumstances within us to allow us to see the world in different ways. And sometimes God is simply present with us when we pray. God doesn't remove the difficulty. God doesn't change our understanding of the difficulty. God just walks with us through the difficulty. For whom do we pray? Maybe this is the easiest one, right? Everyone. We could just answer everyone. But who is everyone? We pray for ourselves, obviously. And we pray for those who are near to us, our friends, our family, our family in Christ. But we should also pray for our enemies. When we pray for our enemies, even if we don't want to, our feelings toward them will change. We should always pray for the church, the church with a capital C and the church, our church, specifically with the lowercase c. We should especially pray for the church in places where it experiences persecution around the world. And we should pray for the church in all the ways that we fail to live up to Christ's prayer that we would be one as he and the Father are one. We should pray for those in positions of authority, government leaders, even if we didn't vote for them, even if we don't particularly like them, we should pray for them. And finally, we should pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. We should pray for those who are lost hurting, and alone in this world. Being present before God and one another in Christian community is also important. It's our second membership vow. It's a second way to look at our discipleship <clears throat> and is just as important as praying. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies this morning. <clears throat> Being present before God and one another is another way of formulating relationships. And we cannot do this thing called discipleship on our own. Right? Right? We need each other. We need this community of believers. We need this time together in worship, and we need this time together in service, which we'll talk about next week, or two weeks, actually. And we can certainly try to be a disciple of Christ on our own for a while. But you know what happens when you don't nurture a relationship in all the ways it needs nurtured? It dies. It, you burn out you die. And we are built for relationships. And even the Holy Trinity is a relationship between God the Creator, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the, re the Sustainer. The Trinity is a relationship of one being, our God. And if we are made in the image of God, then we are made to be in relationship with one another and God. Amen? So therefore, we need Christian relationship and fellowship in order to thrive as disciples. Being present means coming to re worship regularly, and I have a little bit of a feeling I'm preaching mostly to the choir here. 
Am I right? Quite literally, the choir. They are here every week. And so are many of you. But it's good to have that reminder. (laughs) And it means you will honor your commitment to being a disciple of Jesus by worshiping him and seeking relationships with other disciples. It's also a good place to invite a new person into relationship with Christ and other believers. God needs you. God needs you to be present in your prayer life and also present in the life of the church. Just think what our community would look like if no one ever showed up. Or if the only people who showed up were people to be served and not to serve. I want to challenge you to go back and look at the last three months and see how often you were in worship. And by the way, if you can't remember, we do have records of it because you sign in every week. Now, don't stop signing in because we have that record. We need that record. I won't use it against you. But look at how many Sundays you are present before God and your fellow believers. And now I want you to think about committing to increasing that number. And if you're already at 100% on Sundays or you've only missed because you pulled your hamstring and had to have surgery on it, James, I understand. And God understands. So if you're already at 100%, then When else can you show up? When else can you be present? We have a midweek time together, a fellowship, and a spiritual food. So I invite you to think about committing to that. And if it's not that, then... Where'd my bulletin? Oh, it's all the way over here on the floor. One of those mornings, huh? Think about attending one of these other activities or joining another small group. Increase our presence because that is our primary way that we serve God. I already mentioned with Isabel this morning, but we do have our Everyone in Ministry book. And you may notice On the very front here, everybody see the new logo? This is our new church logo. So you'll be seeing it a lot more. And everything that walks out of this door will have that logo on it. First United Methodist Church, Bella Vista. If you notice, it's in the shape of a diamond, just like our stained glass windows. On the left side is the United Methodist Cross and Flame. And on the right side is a little bit of a mosaic using a lot of the colors that are in here. The blues and the yellows and the reds, the oranges. So it's reminiscent of our church structure, literally, our room. But it also has that cross and flame to remind us We need to exit, and we need to go. In your booklets, on the inside front cover, which is not up on the screen because I failed to take a picture of it, inside the front cover is a letter from me. I want you to read that letter before you do anything else, anything else. Then on the bottom, there's a, a pretty little graph and some information, and this is our proposed budget. For 2018. It's broken down a little bit. If you want more detail, that, is, that will be available in the church office. So please, if you want more information about what we're proposing and the different areas that those affect, you are invited to come and get that information. But here is at least a little bit of a breakdown into our major areas. It's only proposed because We aren't going to have that bottom line unless it's pledged. Okay? Then I want to lift up that 
many of us have done this for 20 plus years, right? Every year we pick this up, we search for the the activity that we always do, we write our number. You're going to have to search a little bit harder because we did rearrange some things. (laughs) And in that, I hope that you will look a little closer and pray about maybe increasing what you're doing. Or maybe it's time to find a new ministry area God is calling you to. Then on the back page, very back cover, this is yours to keep. So you keep this entire booklet. This is your family booklet. And on the back page, you're going to write in the initials of each family member or assign a number. Um, Like in my family, I'll be one, Heath will be two, and Natalie will be three. And we'll put next to each number one and three or one and two or however. There's also a box for your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. So that you can write down and have a copy for yourself of what you have avowed and committed to the congregation. Now inside, as I mentioned also with Isabel, there are other pieces of paper that don't look like cards, she said, because they're paper. I have up here the adult form and the children's form. There is a youth form as well. And at the top, you have your name. So if you're married and there are two of you in your household and you're both adults, you each get your own form. I'm going to make sure it was the adult one I was holding up. So you each get your own form, which means that on Commitment Sunday, every single person will come forward and place their own commitment card in. The top half is your service, and then the bottom half is your financial commitment. As I mentioned uh, in the newsletter article you haven't seen yet, (laughs) we will cut these bottom halves off. Poor Patsy (laughs) gets to cut all of these bottom halves off. Of course, we have paper cutters, so that won't be too difficult. But she gets that job because she's the only one that sees that information. Because she puts it in the computer so that she can send out your quarterly statement, right? So I wanted to assure you that that will be kept confidential. Each person in your family. Then uh, there's also a place on here on the adult forms that say, this is my individual or family pledge. So you just circle the one that is, you know, your family. Often families will say, we're going to pledge X amount together. Sometimes it comes out of two different retirement funds, and so you want it under different names. So here's your opportunity to make that clear. We'll discuss more about these forms in the next several weeks. Um, There is on the top, go to the next slide. Maybe it was the previous one. Yep, that one. That blue box that says, I will commit to praying for First United Methodist Church of Bella Vista so many times per month. And we have that opportunity for prayers, presence, service, and witness on the top, and gifts is on the bottom. All right, I think that's all the card slides, am I right? Okay. If you have questions after you look at it um, in the next couple of weeks, please feel free to contact myself or Amy Gilmore or Janet or Pastor Brenda. We will be able to answer questions and help you uh, with any of the descriptions or ministry that you think you would like to add. Please let us know. So to be a member of the church means to support it by your prayers. And so I invite you to pray daily this week. Pray specifically for our church, our community, our nation, and its leaders, friends and family who may need God's healing touch, and for yourself. Pray from your heart. Pray for renewal of the Holy Spirit in your life and in the church's life. Above all, just pray. I also invite you to be present this week. Be present in worship, in study, in fellowship, in any ways that you can be present with fellow Christians this week, do it. I'm sure that our United Methodist women would love for you to be present and help them set up some tables and chairs after worship ends at noon today. Look through these catalogs. 
Take the time to see how it is categorized. Read descriptions. Pray over your current commitments. And ask God if you are being called to new or additional ministry. You may pick up your entire packets, by the way, in the Northex right after service. Being present also means being present around our table. Because only here can we receive the gift of Holy Communion. So I invite you this morning to pray our prayer of confession together. Should, there we go. God of mercy, we confess that we have not loved you with all our being. We have done things which we ought not to have done, and we have left undone things which we ought to have done. We have built walls between neighbors and between countries, and we have ignored the cries of those in need. Forgive us and set us free that we may live into the hope of your calling, that your reign may come on earth as it is in heaven. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks be to God, Jesus died for our sins. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Is this not on the screen? All right, then we'll just, I will pray. God of all nations, you created every person in your image and called us by your Holy Spirit to become one in Christ Jesus. Through baptism and through faith, in Jesus Christ, you showed us the way to live with unique gifts and particularities, yet in harmony with you and with each other. You, O oh God, are indeed above all and through all and in all. So today we join with voices throughout the earth and in heaven, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your child, Jesus Christ. Jesus lived among us to show us your love, caring enough to feed hungry persons, stopping to touch persons in need of healing, reaching out to those not like himself. When people gathered to hear his teachings, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them to eat so that they might be fed. When Jesus ate with his disciples for his final meal on earth, they remembered his blessing on the multitude and listened as he told them, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. They watched as Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and said, Take, drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and the whole world for the forgiveness of sins. After his death and resurrection, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the disciples told others through this meal that Jesus was the, was the Messiah sent by God for all humankind. Remembering now we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on the table spread this day around the globe. And here, on this bread and cup of the vine, may all who partake, wherever they live, know the reconciling love of Jesus Christ. May your church go forth from communion with you to be one in Christ and one in witness to the whole world. 
In your holy name we pray. Amen. Will those who are assisting please come forward? We have always available on communion gluten-free offering, which will be placed right here in the center um, on the table that Verna is pulling down right now. All are welcome at this table. All who love Christ, who seek repentance, and seek to live in harmony with one another. You are here and welcome to dine with Jesus this day.
Your invitation has been given, and that is to be in prayer and to be present. To pray, I invite you to not make a single pen mark in that book or on a card yet. Don't do it. I want you to hold on to it for at least three weeks before you make a single mark in it. And I want you to pray over it. Our final hymn this morning is a charge to keep I have. Um, Let us sing the first and fourth stanzas, first and last stanzas. Will you stand as you are able? God? Do you love Jesus? Do you love the Holy Spirit? Do you know that God loves you? Good. Then go forth sharing that love this week. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen.